Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show live from the Mayhem Studio in its final days here in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, and uh, we're going to have a fun one today. Uh, first of all, over over in the, uh, uh, in the in the production area uh, is uh, Larry joining us as well, Mutilator Larry on the Twitter. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good, good. We're definitely going to talk about uh, Kurt Angle a bit later in the show with you. Oh, good. Uh-huh. I have a question for you. Okay. And also, Chad the Shad joining us, the OG Mayhemer from way, 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 way back in the day. Mm-hmm. The, um, the first episode. The 11-year-plus the 11, 11 <laughs> yes. history. Hello. I'm here. Again. Hello. I love your waving to all the audio people on the <laughs> podcast. They can hear Hello. It. Can you hear my waves? Yep. Can you hear my waves? And we got some very special guests uh, uh, with us this week. Two opponents this Saturday at the Stomp Out, Stomp Out for Cancer event that's happening in Lamont Fur- Furnace, PA. Uh, first, Sean Phoenix joining us. That is me. Hey, and on the other side of the pillow wall, because they are <laughs> opponents, so we got to make sure that this, you know, everything stays cool over here. Keep is simple. Yes, it's <laughs> Lee Moriarty. How you doing, sir? I am great. How are you? Awesome, awesome. Uh, so, for, well, first of all, tell us a little bit about this event uh, coming up this weekend that you guys are involved in. Just a kind of quick thing. We're going to talk more about it later in the show and, of course, uh, with the Indie Mayhem show this week. But uh, what's what's going on down in Lamont Furnace this week? It is a uh, charity show uh, f- for uh, American Cancer Research, I believe, is the uh, name of the uh, of the organization. Uh, the Trestlers are putting it on. Basically, all of Pittsburgh Wrestling is coming together. Uh, donating our time to put on a show for the fans. Um, like I said, all the money is going toward that great, uh, great charity. Um, and a lot of first-time matches are happening. Uh, Lee and I, uh, we wrestled in a tag match, but never a singles match. So that I that is <laughs> it was my first match, which is which is legit. Uh, we got Matt Carter versus David Lawless. That's the first time. Uh, Honey Badger versus uh, Katie Arquette, I believe. Uh, we've got Shirley Doe versus G Raver, and we've got a ton of tag team match uh, tag teams for a uh, tag team gauntlet. So uh, it's uh, it's really cool that all of Pittsburgh is coming together for this uh, for this you know it, it sucks that cancer's a thing, but you know mm-hmm. we're all working together to stomp it out. You know, and, and this is one of the things. This is a, probably the fourth charity event in the area that I'm aware of, but it definitely seems to be the biggest. Right. right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. definitely feels like it at least. I think it be because of the all the first time matches, it mm-hmm. really feels like a big deal. You know, not that the others didn't feel like a big deal, but since there's so many and right. for such a huge uh, organization, uh, yeah, I know I'm excited for it. A lot of people are excited for it. Right. Right. And of course, you guys, uh, both both members of PWX, as you said, you've kind of faced each other before. So yes. I don't know if there's any history there going into this match or anything like that, or you just out there going to have have fun. Uh, without pillows separating you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're both considered the fastest rising new guys in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. So there is that between us. We're trying to prove which one of us is better. I'm pretty sure it's me, <laughs> but we'll see Saturday. Awesome, man. We'll, we'll do a deep dive with you guys on Indie Mayhem Show. And if you guys don't catch us on the stream, we'll, that'll be out Thursday on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Master Feed as well as on the Indie Mayhem Show feed as well and all of our video outlets. Uh, you can check out this and uh, everything else going on at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can subscribe to the Wrestling Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and those video versions on the Facebook and the YouTube page for wrestling mayhem show uh also keep an eye on both of those because we do of course this show at 10 p.m eastern time every tuesday night uh you can get there one way from live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com that'll just drop you on the video section of our facebook page uh, and you can drop in uh, and and be part of that stream and we do we get a lot of interaction other people that are uh, not on the show or people that are here in attendance apparently joined as well so they can interact too like tina out there out west brandon down in uh, oklahoma city uh mad mike's joining us from poughkeepsie uh danielle's joining us 
uh, and a whole bunch of other people popping through the night. Wheels, Jen Carlins, thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out with us here on our Tuesday nights in our uh, little celebration of pro wrestling. Also, uh, please uh, drop us a line to our email address. Good times. That's, that's your cue. <laughs> I know you don't have all <laughs> the other people here. So. The chat. You're reading the chat. <laughs> good wants, times. Mike wants to break my wall down. <laughs> good times. <laughs> wrestling. Good times at wrestlingmanshow.com or 412 206 WMS0. That's the hotline, and uh, we'll, we'll play those. And we do read and listen to all the emails, and uh, we put the good ones up on the show for discussion. Also, please drop us a note. Please go to patreon.com slash wrestlingmanshow. I need to read the right notes. Uh, thank you to the, our. our uh, our, our patreons that have been supporting the show uh at the dollar fan of the show level as a dollar a month uh first bo diggity Woo-hoo! as well as ed burke the matthew and jennifer carlin's foundation for podcast betterment Tregar at uh, breaking wordpress.com thank you so much alex Carr is out there in cali with power to the smarks on twitter uh bobby fj town and of course our friends at the pocky club Five dollar level, Tina Keys and Christopher Bishop. Thank you everybody for supporting the show, putting your money where our microphones are, and uh, and, get, and and if you don't want to drop a couple bucks at patreoncom slash wrestling mayhem show, uh, you can just share the show, like it, uh, uh, leave a comment, especially on iTunes is a really big help because there's some weird comments in there. Uh, whatever you can do to help get the mayhem word out, and and subscribe to all the shows on iTunes that we do. Just punch in uh, wrestling mayhem show and we have a bunch listed there because we do a lot of show coverage and the indie mayhem show interviews and everything like that uh so let's get into the show we had the most amazingly titled pay-per-view this past weekend oh. <laughs> which now uh, larry, larry you you attended a party with me for this yeah that had a wonderful theme about uh, uh, about it can you can you kind of tell us uh, about that well the it so we did a great balls of fire party, and you had to bring a ball shaped food with you. <laughs> so everything had to be ball shaped, mm-hmm. and um, including the dog. <laughs> <laughs> there was a dog there that was quite round, uh, but yeah, I don't know. We had cheese balls. We had cheese we had balls. pepperoni croissant balls or something, and uh, um, it was. It was pretty incredible. Um, it was a very rounded affair. Uh, so oh. I, <laughs> I had to go somewhere with that. Uh, but no, I mean, despite that, and and, and I, I love the wordplay, everybody, because apparently um, um, because of the ticker for Great Balls of Fire around, <laughs> it, 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 it went down to like eat balls. If you if you if somebody's blocking it right, I did see that. that was so they were talking like a lot of people were like, "There's a lot of subliminal messages last <laughs> yeah. night, right?" Yeah. So that um, was the most non PG pay per view they've had in a long time. It was between that and all the blood that was spewing out of people in every <laughs> single match, which is ironic because it was originally titled "Bad Blood," right? Was it really? Yeah, was I think it? so. Yeah, I think that's that. It was supposed to be apparently bad blood. the wrestlers didn't get the memo. Yeah. <laughs> They weren't supposed to bleed. They were supposed to kick each other in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, and the worst one, uh, you guys see Matt Hardy. Like He had a giant gash. Oh. I think it was above his eyebrow. Yeah. Nine yeah. stitches. Right? Nine yeah. stitches. Um, like it, There was one point where we were just like, we just saw him in the corner. We're like, why is his face covered with blood? Yeah. And when did it happen? Right. I still don't know like, yeah, don't where know. that happened. Like I, You could see the stain on the mat the following match. So yeah. I don't know if it bled through the... Because I know they changed they, yeah, the they really changed them. But I, don't, I think it like soaked through to the next level or mm-hmm, the next possibly. sheet. But I don't know. I don't know how we actually got injured. Mm-hmm. Uh, but injured. but generally, um, we had. I I, I I hate getting brought down by these, but I, I see comments when we're kind of talking about you know, hey, how was the show and everything, and somebody's like, ah, matches weren't really better than Raw's, and it feels like nothing happened. I'm like, there was a near manslaughter charge <laughs> with an ambulance and you're telling me nothing interesting happened on this show just another day at the office i mean it is just just what you do yeah. right i mean yeah i mean yeah. that's it's it's i don't know what we're doing here no, when i see nothing happened when before. i see comments like that on the show like this so. uh, it, uh, it makes me wonder what they watch regularly that they think's okay <laughs> clips of vehicular like, manslaughter dude, somebody's watching blood drive Apparently, yeah. and okay. and wanted to be that. I don't know. No one died. It's just <laughs> boring. I don't know. He 
forward. He's right? looking pretty beat up. <laughs> I, I guess yeah. I get what they're saying, though, because mm-hmm. like he walked out on his own. So ultimately, yeah. there wasn't really any consequences of nearly dying. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yeah. yeah, it's an awesome visual. Uh, yeah. But did it matter? Because he walked out. You know, he wasn't actually taken away to the hospital. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But I mean, I mean, the story afterwards of uh, just this bloodied man just wandering in the streets of Dallas the rest of the <laughs> evening were kind of fun. Yeah, and, and, and the petition to arrest. I did see that Roman Reigns on <laughs> attempted murder charges. <laughs> it was going around. It was in our group. I know, uh, which is like, it's like, hey, yeah, no, there should be consequences. Right, to right, this, right. Um, but again, I love, you know, I, I feel like we get little glimmers of that here and there, but it felt very attitude era when they did yeah. this. I don't know about yeah. taking the time with it yeah. on a pay-per-view and right. then throwing out Heath Slater and Kurt Hawkins. Uh, yeah. And not seeing the finish. And not that was the finish. weird. Yeah. That was weird. That's like, like the bell rang and there yeah. was a winner. I, you know what? You I, didn't see who won at all. I think they learned their lesson from the House of Horrors match where this, people don't want to just watch the screen, like things happening on the screen. So it gave let's, it gave the people in the arena right, right. something yeah. to watch, I, and everybody else just had to hear it. I, I got the impression that uh, it was it was supposed to be like, a, oh no, we need to stall for time mm-hmm. type thing. Like, oh no, this. this so uh, you guys go out and and wrestle. Yeah. So we need to take the attention off of this. Yeah, even have them like they're still taping yeah, up yeah, on yeah, the yeah. way out and everything. Yeah. So. But then they put the attention back on the the thing. It didn't make any sense. Yeah. At least give me. At least Kurt Hawkins had a tweet later that night because we were all wondering, and he says Heath won with a Canadian destroyer off the top rope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cleared that right up then. <laughs> so, hey, he's got kids. He's, he, he does have kids. And he's yeah. been learning a few things on the on the <laughs> with the kids on the trampoline or something, I guess. <laughs> so, um, but uh, generally, I thought it was a fun show, of course. But uh, I also mm-hmm. don't have. It was one of the better pay per views this year. Really? You think I so? I think so. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, it was especially a fun raw. Show. One of the better raw pay per views for sure. Mm-hmm. Like title aside, they somehow managed to roll it into like a really well done show. Mm-hmm. I don't I, without Finn Balor. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> or the I, Drifter. Yeah. Yeah. Tragedy. Yeah. It's a it pretty well put together show overall. Like. Mm-hmm. And if you're gonna have a one off, well, I don't know if it's gonna. I assume it's gonna be a one off with that name. <laughs> I don't know. They keep saying the inaugural, inaugural. Damn it, inaugural <laughs> great yeah. balls of fire. Like Michael Cole really wanted to drive that home yeah. and says, "This is the first of so many balls of fire." <laughs> you know, so many balls. So many balls are in our future of fire. But it was guys. a good one for not not being one of the you know the cornerstone shows or mm-hmm. the you know, after a big show show, like, you know, the well, one after WrestleMania or something even like the, that. The so, one after WrestleMania was awful. Was that, that was, it wasn't Fastlane. It was uh, payback, payback or something. Yeah. That was horrible. Yeah. Yeah. And then th- this one was more extreme than Extreme Rules. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it was a good, it's a good show. I enjoyed it. I love, I love if you look empirically at the show and basically just read the results, I can see where someone would say nothing happened. Well, that's why you don't. That's that's why we ban Mad Mike from the impact resu- uh, spoilers, because it just has that <laughs> preconceived notion and, and everything like that. Um, uh, dead. Mad Mike saying that uh, Joe and Lesnar saved the show from being average. OK. Joe and Lesnar was really good. That, it was really good. Yeah, I liked it. I don't know. Like, I, enjoyed I, it. I thought that show was above average before that. Mm-hmm. I mean, there wasn't a bad match on the card, really. Yeah. What would you, you like? What, what would you say is a bad match? Like, what did you look at the card and go, "Man, I didn't like that." Well, no. Okay, like, I that, that I, I didn't like. I at didn't all. like the Seth Rollins match. That was the worst part of the show for me. Really? Yeah. I, I just it felt like a normal Raw match. Are you kind of yeah? Because we again we saw it again the next night. Yeah, and it feels yeah, like we've and, seen it so many times. So are you kind of on the I'm I'm kind of done with Seth kind of kind of line? It, it, they're both stale for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've never been a fan of Bray. Like I respect him, but mm-hmm. name me a good match he's been in that didn't involve Daniel Bryan or AJ Styles. Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it. Like he's a great character, and yeah. you know everything he works his ass off. But I mean, does nothing for me. Well, there, there's no storyline for anybody. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. That was that felt like a filler storyline. He comes out yeah. says spooky shit. And yeah, we have I mean, a match. He's listening to yeah, spooky shit last year that, and a half. He's yeah. in that in between right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. They don't really have anything for him, but they still need. They still want to use him, right? So so are just are you a like, Bray Wyatt guy? Uh, not really. 
uh, he's more character than in ring mm-hmm. worker, mm-hmm. and I watch more the in ring worker guys because that's my style, and I want to learn from that. But I can understand why people like Bray Wyatt, and I can understand why people don't like him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was better on SmackDown, it seemed like, than he was on Raw. There's too much going on on Raw for him to stand out. Uh, this is a, this is another point from Mad Mike. It says the matches were fine, but had a lot of shitty finishes, like a count out win for Alexa, interference for Miz. Yeah, well, that's kind of par for the course for a Miz match. Seth Bray was middling Braun and Roman, while Fun didn't ultimately. It didn't ultimately mean. <laughs> <laughs> but man, <laughs> just I am okay with them. Uh, why? Why a family versus Shield six man? Says uh, uh, Chris Larusso. Yeah, I mean, but, that, but that, I mean, that, like, there's like man. five other people in yeah, that. Yeah, like yeah. you, you, you lose. Like Shield and Wyatt Family were great as holes, right? Yeah, and we've seen, you know, kind of all over the place results with them by themselves, right? Right. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's kind of how that goes. I'm tired of ineffective factions, right? <laughs> what do you mean, like, 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 like? There's all these factions, and none of them are accomplishing anything. They're just like you look at like Evolution or some of the other ones, like the successful ones. They're all like. Winning the tag team titles or like you know like actually accomplishing you, you something. want a four horsemen conquering faction something like that like well, that listen be, there's that an indie promotion the, down the road that, that you should, should be check the out that's doing a faction that. though you know <laughs> that's the point of having a faction and yeah to gain an advantage yeah right, and competitively a ever. lot of them aren't doing that they're all teaming up and then losing so you're talking about like like what what like which factions are you talking about Wyatt family, family? Yeah. not that they are doing anything now. But I didn't think they were doing much before mm-hmm. when they were together. It was, it's kind of hard to keep them scary after a while, especially when they tend to be fighting the same other factions mm-hmm. because they're a group. So apparently they have to have a group to fight against. They just can't pick on people, which is what they should do. They well, should just pick on individuals. Well, that's the thing. They were doing but that. They but were, it wasn't accomplished. There was no end goal for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I always believe this person and they went on to the next person and then the next person you know like i don't know i always thought it would be cool if uh like we we get that he's a cult leader but we never really saw that like he debuted with with harper and uh rowan like i i would have liked to see him like it was cool when randy joined i want to mm-hmm. see him you know take people that you know they're not doing anything with brainwash them kind make of them straight edge falling. society kind of, like, yeah but yeah. i mean like he did with um Xavier yeah. Woods for like a short period. Yeah, there yeah, was like yeah, a short yeah. period he was actually doing. That. He always deep. Yeah. Well, I watched. I was when they put up the early NXT episodes. I was watching like his debut packages mm-hmm. again, which were so right, so well done. He's in the woods, and there is like you know five to ten people like out there raising their hands, and like who are all these people? Right. And he shows up with two of them, the biggest two, and but the scariest yeah. two. But still, like he showed up with two people, and we never saw the rest of the family. Exactly. And he always proposes to have this, and and I know we the fireflies are are are, are part of it and everything too, yeah. but it's, it's just they had a, they had a bunch of sheep pop up when they jumped Randy Orton. There's the sheep stuff. There was the the kid, the, the creepy kids, kid yeah. in the cage the one time, right? Yeah, I mean they're like so, they're like takers druids. Yeah, they show up yeah. whenever they're needed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's 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 like, and, and remember, like I mean, Undertaker had some cheesy moments. Yeah, right. Let's yeah. be honest about it, you know. Yeah. And maybe this is one of those where we're kind of still discovering what that um, spot is with the character moving forward. Like the problem is, I don't think Bray has adapted the way Taker would have at this point right right because let's see this many years into main event or main show we were at least up to like maybe the hat was gone in purple gloves i don't know <laughs> maybe there was the tear at that point <laughs> night, creatures of the night right right you right. know uh what was that around 94 ish uh taker versus taker i think was that yeah. year maybe uh so like he died he died in a casket yeah. match and, and right, floated right. to the ceiling like bray is not doing that kind of stuff and but we see him every week so it's yeah. kind of getting a little like all right here here's crazy uncle bray again right uh, uh talking with us and it just like you start not caring what the point is that's so. what i think well, here's what undertaker had that he that he doesn't have undertaker had a had a manager mm-hmm. yeah undertaker had Paul Heyman. He needs an actual. But he's Abigail. the speaker. But he's matter. the talker. Yeah. CM Punk had a but, manager. Um, I think, I think Bray needs Sister Abigail. I think they need that creepy mm-hmm. Sister Abigail to take maybe Bray to stop talking so much. Because I think that's another thing that I myself have lost a little bit on him is 
he starts talking some crazy stuff. Like, if you let him go on long enough, he just starts mumbling about all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'm like, Bray, if you would have said, like, three sentences, <laughs> you're good. Yeah. You start talking yeah. about trees and <laughs> gods and souls and all this stuff. Like, just keep it, like, the three sentences yeah. and you're good. Less is more. Mm -hmm. If you start fleshing out your whole theology, it just starts getting all jumbled. And Listen, man, really just hand him a pamphlet. Just hand him a pamphlet, Bray, at this point. So. Uh, there's some, some more comments. Uh, Chris LaRusso saying, you didn't like when he made John Cena almost give in to the hate and bring a children's choir? I don't remember that. that was cre yeah, he had all the kids singing, uh, you got the whole world yep, yep. in your hands. Yep, that was, that was pretty good. And again, like I just I feel like you know Mike always says you know Bray, Bray doesn't win, so it doesn't matter because right. he's never going to win, right? And it's like, well, he's Better not. watch out. He He's got two wins in a row did. now. That was That's surprising. Right. There you go. This back to back nights. Beginning yeah. of the street. Shh, better watch out. He, uh, I mean, he's not, but he's also, he's not Undertaker. Maybe he's more Papa Shango. Right. Right? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Even the Boogeyman had a better winning streak than he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's Come more on. of a, he was more of a spectacle, right? I mean. Maybe, maybe, a spectacle. Maybe well, Bray yeah. should Bray's get some hoes. Bray's the biggest some spectacle hose. they have. Yeah, with maybe. The exception of Demon Maybe Ballard. Bray should get some hoes. We have Bray should start coming out <laughs> with some, know? like, like creepy, the... gr creepy goth girls or something. He could go. Right? Uh, you know, Rob Zombie on the whole thing. It looks oh, like Rob Zombie. Yeah. There you go. Get some really wild hoes and just take that Papa Shango <laughs> Godfather arc. He's, <laughs> just he's gonna be screwed. Make it his own. He's gonna be screwed if if the Broken Hardy's gimmick ever comes to WWE. Mad Mike, this is like, true. Disco Inferno has a better winning percentage than Bray. Yeah, but in the end, wins and losses aren't really. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's it's more perception. Um. Really. Well, the perception is, is he loses a lot. Uh, see, Tina says Bray <laughs> should change his character, that, that maybe delve effect. into his family heritage, taking a cue from his grandfather. And again, I think like maybe Bo's kind of coming over to that right. with his uh, what did I call him the other night. He looks like the uh, the guy that got back from the war that hasn't figured out he's home yet. Um, <laughs> yes. When you think about him, right? He's like a Lieutenant Dan Undertaker. That's what we. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> who said that on Sunday? That's exactly who what we said, said that on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Which is great. It's something different. Like I, <laughs> it, he's not yelling "Bo, leave." He's he looks. Yeah, he I looks, like it. He, he's. I think I haven't seen the movie, but I saw the preview. He looks like he's just become his marine character. Right? That's funny. You're right. That's yeah. funny. You know, like this thing that they gave us is <laughs> gave me is better than what I'm doing in wrestling. So <laughs> just roll with it. it sparked right? him. He's like, hey, you know what? This is it. <laughs> I got it. So um, he uh, is growing a beard. Andrew in the he, chat. He has Bray White's hand me down clothes on. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew in the chat says, just saw Papa, Papa Shango action figure at Target yesterday paired with the Ultimate Warrior. Does there, is there like a feature where he bleeds black from his hair in that figure? I love that he has an action figure. <laughs> well, Papa Shango? Of course he does. I love it. I mean, geez, I think they might even have a comma action figure out there for him. Wow. So, yeah. like, you gotta think, he's gotta, be, he's gotta be really collecting the royalties with like three or four different characters out there. Yeah, do right to censor air got good father too oh, man. on right top of it father. you see i we, 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 remember we were at uh when we were at pwx the other day in, in, in that little shop thing somebody was really excited because they found a right to censor stephen richards <laughs> <laughs> they're like really psyched <laughs> about the stephen richards right to censor so which is pretty amazing um oh no, andrew says no he looked for the future um he didn't have it um he should uh, uh brandon says that bray should um um become an evangelist and follow god and make people follow god he also should be i think rejoined by uh mordecai Ooh. who just restored that gimmick in aiw a little bit ago <laughs> um yeah dog likes it <laughs> dog's like dog, dog likes it, it. <laughs> he's digging it <laughs> mention mordecai and it's going down, yeah. I think I think people go and smoke weed behind my neighbor's house, and he sees them. Is what yes. happens because I definitely smell it. Um, new studio coming soon, guys. <laughs> uh, there needs to be a feature for where to spew yellow stuff. <laughs> what? Well, oh yeah, he made him puke one yeah, time, he did. didn't he? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, well, hey, uh, we'll get into some more wrestling here. Great balls of fire. Um, I think I think we need to talk a little bit about uh, uh, Joe and uh, Brock and. Brock's potty mouth a little bit, uh, oh but 
It was brilliant. It was, it's it was every great. time. It's great. Love every it. time he, he talks. does not give a crap. Uh, but in the, meantime, in the meantime, give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway, sliceonbroadway.com, uh, providing a perfect pepperoni pizza for podcasting in Pittsburgh. I think I did that backwards. Uh, but uh, always uh, helping us uh, feed our guests that come in here on Tuesday nights. And we're going to get a little bit closer to them in a couple of weeks when we move to our new studio. So really excited to be uh, representing uh, uh, up there on Broadway. Uh, check them out. They're here in the Beachview area if you're in the area. Um, right along the tracks here on Broadway, hence Slice on Broadway. I know it doesn't make sense in the other places they are. Uh, down in Carnegie, PA, down <laughs> to Main Street, or in PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, really good to us, and uh, we do, we've been doing start, starting to do, uh, actually, some Sorgatron Media Hangouts, uh, pizza parties up there as well. So uh, keep an eye on our Facebook page <coughs> for sharing those uh, as Larry dies over there. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> just look a little, sorry. Um, but no, check them out, sliceonbroadway.com, pgh underscore slice on the Twitter. And you can see where they retweeted our buddy Tragar with his Eat at Slice on Broadway uh, uh, sign that he's been bringing to the wrestling shows like he did Friday night at the Girl Fight show. Uh, so they, they've been, they apparently really like that, that our fans are bringing signs to wrestling shows for Slice on Broadway. And we really appreciate that. Uh, people are getting, getting into it and enjoying it as well and checking it out. Like coming up all the way here from, you know, when people come in here from New York City or up from, uh, uh, about an hour away, you know, we are always meeting up at Slice and, and checking out. So thanks to Slice on Broadway for supporting the show for so long. All right. Let's talk about Brock's potty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he gets fun. the bill for all those FCC violations? No, 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 no. Because he's getting paid so much. That's why I think he gets the bill for it. You, you think so? Maybe, I just give, like, I'd find him. Vince is picking out. I, I'd find no, him no, no, no. Vince, it, 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 this is if, if our truth did it. He's getting fined. He's getting fired. Right? He's getting yeah, probably. Um, but Brock makes them too much money. Is being paid too much money. It's his character. It's yeah, it's it. You know. He's expected to do that. It's 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 it adds I don't to the think mystique. he was supposed to grab the mic on Monday. No? I don't think so. No? Mm. You don't think they're just playing? I, What's that? You don't think they're just Oh, I think they were, but I don't think he was supposed to grab the mic. Okay. <laughs> All right. He's he's been chatty lately. So, um, it's unusual. But but you know, you, you guys, we were saying with, again. <laughs> Tina, yeah, Tina is apparently banned from Pittsburgh hometown rivalries or something else. Uh, so, all right, we'll we'll have to uh, send some to you. We've been talking to the slice about a delivery option. Uh, but anyways, um, you know, it was mentioned in the chat. You know, maybe maybe the show was kind of you know, in some people's opinion, saved or the highlight was Brock and Joe. Uh, I was really worried when we had about 10 minutes of the show left. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> my God. I thought they yeah. were going to have a Goldberg It doesn't match. really matter in the WWE Network era probably now, right? Yeah. So, uh, but, but I'm sure it matters for the arena they're in, though, right? Like, they can't stay there all night. No, but that's you got to think, not all night, but if they go 20 minutes over, I don't think that's a big deal right, for the right. arena. Yeah. Necessarily, you got to also think they're going to be in there doing raw talk or talking that's true. Stuff yeah. or recording whatever do post stuff. Do they do dark matches well, for pay-per-views? No. No, no, they not don't. really. Like but, your, your dark match is really that kickoff <coughs> show. You also anything. have to factor in that they were in Texas, which is that's true. a mm-hmm. couple mm-hmm. hours. Yeah. So, I mean, it wraps up 11 here. But it's, it's 10 what? there. 10 there. Yeah, it's 10 there central. So that that might play into their plans too. Mm-hmm. They might be able to have that extra time. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think, and I don't know if they've kind of loosened this up with the pay-per-view companies because these, these are still being provided on pay-per-view. Yeah. Like in the, in the general sense. And we know the classic WCW one that they didn't finish it. Yeah. You know, I back th- in the I day. think the pay-per-view companies are just agreeing to whatever they say at this point because they're five years away from not being on pay-per-view anymore mm-hmm. you know so they're just getting the money while they yeah. can and uh, like that's the thing we're running into with the network too is uh these network pay-per-views are what all the time now yeah so they're basically like mid-season shows now they're I, not, they're I not call really them. pay-per-views they're saturday, right, right. saturday to, night's main event man you don't have to sell them no because people are getting them and or like yeah. by accident they're yeah. like oh yeah. I, I guess i can watch it or they're forgetting about it hour. they're forgetting about it they're like oh there's another one this week right that, that's why they can yeah. name pay-per-views great balls of fire because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you couldn't do that before we're running out of names and then when yeah. someone says well, yeah nothing really happened there was like a glorified raw i was like right yeah it is yeah that's what it is mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. is a glorified raw it's a weekend special 
Mm-hmm. They, you got you got to think when they're writing this stuff. They're you know we complained for years, years on this show particularly. That's not thirty five dollars worth of a show. That's not right. what, what the hell did they end up so up they, to? So they so lowered the so they lowered the price sixty dollars. What? <laughs> so so instead of instead of improving the content, they lowered the price. <laughs> <laughs> well, and they cut out the middleman, right? Because the biggest thing was like how much of that pay per view buy did they get? It's going to direct TV, uh, in demand, you know, whatever levels of, of pay-per-view providers that there are, there are, and that split how many ways, you know, they, they were only getting a fraction when they saw like, listen, we're going to make, put these for nine ninety nine, get a million plus subscribers and, and also make other, other content for it. Yeah. Granted, it's a lot of cheap content. Right, Let's right. put a GoPro in a car. Let's uh, uh, film pranks backstage. Let's, you know. These three dudes having dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's easy content. Yeah. But it's good content, right? That's why when um, I think Legends House, like, it, like, like cost was an issue, right? For something like that and tough enough uh, to do. It, and reality shows are generally cheaper. But still, like sometimes right. it's a little it's a little hard for those. Your production costs go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything that would have been higher end. You got between your back catalog, total divas, uh, uh, you know, hang out with some cameras with the Foley family for 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 four weeks, and we'll get you know a season out of that. You know, it's You'll really see, the ones they really care about, like 24, mm-hmm. or the ones that only come out every. Mm-hmm. Two months or three months, but you gotta think. So you're they have on, real production schedule, right? Real right. production, but still, what is that? We interview a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. We're already doing all these interviews with a bunch of people for our DVD projects, W list, countdowns, whatever else is on. They snag it. That's how they get like you know. Uh, uh, I'm saying I think somebody has been on the list, like Sam Roberts or something. Now he's part of the network. Like he's at a show and he's like, "Here, we're going to ask you every question that's going around yeah. right now. What did you think about ladder matches? What did you think about this? What do you think about Kevin Owens because he's got a DVD coming up, right? Like that's how they're like, oh my god, they got him for this too. Oh, they got yeah. him for this too. It's like no, they got him once backstage when they're in LA, archive, you know, and and they ask every question about anybody they even think about having a project with, and that gets archived. Somebody like Mad Mike when he worked there uh, in, in logging puts that puts that in a database and they're like all right we're doing a project on roddy piper everybody's talked about roddy piper in the last 10 years boom 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 we got it we we, they can spit it out pretty quick yeah so it's genius so it's genius you gotta think about how much production how much production is happening backstage at a raw or at smackdown yeah Yeah. you know yeah you think of how how much besides what's happening on air what are other people doing mm -hmm. backstage nobody's going to it's just got to be nobody's going to stanford to shoot those interstitials yeah. of them posing, you know, and being badass yeah. with the big W beside them. That's a green screen. So, hey, you can do some poses and stuff. We'll like backstage, you got dudes eating, yeah, yeah. eating at the catering. Yeah. And you got your interview schedules. And then you got your, you know, your gorilla position. And then you got the live show. And then you mm-hmm. got whatever else. You know, backstage segment one's over here. Backstage segment two's when, over when, here. When Miz was doing nothing on the show. He was on every one of those things because he understands reality TV. He's talking about everything he could think of, has an opinion on everything. And notice when all those initial shows came out, all those interview shows, like he had an opinion about everything. A lot of those guys. Who were on those first countdown shows? It was all guys that were like on main event and superstars, right? And yeah. a lot of them were let go shortly after, which makes it a little weird. Uh, but they, <laughs> you know, but but they're like, I'm trying to get out there and get FaceTime, <coughs> and that's the perfect way to do it. Just like, just sit here and talk about everything. You know, have an right. opinion on, you know, Ultimate Warrior. You're too young. Yeah. Who cares? Have an opinion on him. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, what does he mean to you right now? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, exactly. So it was just, it's, it's just genius, and and just this this idea of yeah, they do this big production on Monday and Tuesday and some Sundays, but you know. They're maximizing that. They film house shows. Mm-hmm. They act like they don't, mm-hmm. but they do. They mm-hmm. film the whole thing, mm-hmm. and that's when they say, "Oh, we stumbled across exclusive." Well, how many times? They, they ain't got it. It stumbled. Wait, wait, wait! That. How many times? You remember the old Coliseum videos? Mm-hmm. Where do you think those matches came from? It was yeah. an extra match off of a wrestle a wrestle challenge or 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 a, a, a tour they did like a random tour in like Japan. Like I love the world tour ones, right? It was like they filmed like a full on production. It's yeah. like in the early '90s in like the Egg Dome, hmm. but I saw one match. 
<laughs> you know and some of those are surfacing now in the collections yeah. you know like hey here's this like super random match you know like i think didn't they put up like like when, like the ladder match from the house show or something that that brett and sean did initially that yeah, was like the original yeah. one it's like they got it yeah, yeah. look at all the, that's a, the content from angles documentary his 24 documentary mm-hmm. like half of that was just old footage from the attitude era the interview like from like when he was training yeah. Uh, what up, was up that the, intended to be used up for? Up on Mount Washington. Unbelievable. No, no, not even that. Just like him talking at the training facility. Oh, yeah, that one. About, about, he was talking about being a... a, a right, you know, right. Yeah, yeah. It, it was just like, what was that intended for back then? Right. Right? Yeah. That That's incredible foresight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you think, who filmed that? Like, right. Who was like, yeah, we need this. Yeah. For I mean, he's a big deal. Yeah, what were we going to use it? Then they probably did that with Mark Henry and did that with every how many uh, uh, Olympic medalists that failed <laughs> over the years, right? Because yeah. there's been a ton of them because they would yeah. just sign any. Mike said it was an outtake of his original vignette. Hmm. Really? That makes sense. That makes sense. I would just like to point out that I also recorded all my training stuff just because like you never know yeah like the mm-hmm. theory was yeah, good idea. if anyone wants this footage for a documentary if i'm ever gonna get one right i right. have it you well know? that's yeah. like what did we do that's when we, excellent forethought absolutely when we did the zach gown uh documentary right mm-hmm. we sat down with truth martini and him and we watched his first match okay it was brutal, <laughs> it was brutal. But we, you know, but that was like, you know, you didn't know there was going to be a project like that, right, right? You know, and then we pulled that up, and also his match when he was like, like before he went to rehab, where he was like, you know, broken down and uh-huh. shouldn't have been in a ring, you know. But you know, that's stuff that that can matter, right? Exactly, so, yeah. All so. future content, yeah. and, and also like I'm kind of OCD, like I like keeping track of everything, but right. but mm-hmm. that legit was the mindset is I never know when I'm going to need this, or even if I get hurt, at least I'll have footage or something like that. Right. But, and exactly. even if you wanted to produce your own, your own hype. Right. You know, yeah. Thing like, Hey, here's two minutes of me mm-hmm. working my way up yep. in that style. Yep. So you can, yeah. So I wanted to direct to Larry cause Larry's the one that every show that I attended with him <laughs> for, for the last year, year, two Pro- years, probably something like that. Yeah. That, wow. Well, how long have we known each other? Um, He's the one that was like, this is the one Kurt Angle comes back. <laughs> Every, Everybody next to us thought the same thing, too. He, yeah, he's, he's it's infecting the, the section <laughs> at this point. He was getting so excited at these shows. And meanwhile, like, he didn't, like, like it was, like, you know, October last year. And it's just like, there's no chance. Like This no. past March? This past March. Well, whatever. this past this patch March, you were right. So, there, but yeah, he wasn't on the show, but he was there. He was there. He was yeah. there. That's right. That right. He, he filmed all this stuff for yeah. what we saw this week. Yep. So, so I wanted to ask, uh, obviously, you watched the Kurt Angle 24. Yeah. Uh, 24-7. Um, did it make you uh, almost cry at the end? Cry at the end? Yes. No. I mean, I enjoyed it. Um, I think it was a good. What, I cried. <laughs> I cried. No, I didn't I, know you heard me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he has headphones on. Jeez, I didn't know I was that loud. <laughs> I only have one. Uh, no, uh, we got good microphones. Oh, um, good, good. No, I, I, I thought that was probably one of the better twenty fours that they did, and it was a good. It 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 was a good way to uh, reintroduce him mm-hmm. to people that didn't get to see his stuff, you know, and then also like basically. Um, people who already saw his stuff like get them more interested in him. Like I'm more, I'm more invested in his character now. Mm-hmm. You know, after Which, so were that. you? I mean, how much of original run of Kurt Angle did you see? I saw almost all of it. Like okay. I stopped yeah. watching like around 2007. Okay. So, but yeah, that that was. I was more invested in his run than Austin's original run in the Attitude Era. Mike's Mike's saying that he wished they actually talked a little about his TNA time, and they didn't even say the name TNA. No, but it was it, it was it was in, on Dixie's. Title. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think they were allowed to. I don't because yeah, it was in one of the news articles. That they it was in the news article. Screen. They talked about it. Right, like they, everybody referenced it, but they didn't show any of his stuff. Well, they can't. Yeah, they don't. They, they, they can't. They they, they can't. Yeah. They don't have a nice little deal like to do with Ring of Honor. 
Sure. Where the Kevin was, Owens first look felt like a Ring of Honor yeah. recap DVD. Uh, there was so much stuff in there. Like they basically talked about the entire storyline of him and El Generico, and I'm just like, what company am I watching right now? <laughs> right. You know, I think did I pick did I pick this up in the five dollar bin last show? I don't remember. Uh, but uh, no, but uh, yeah, and, and I don't think Ring of Honor ever puts that much production. Stuff. <laughs> it's just yeah. it's basically like 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 these are like just like this is just a bunch of Christopher Daniels matches. That's, <laughs> that's, that's 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 it. You know, it's just like the way I do indie DVDs. Right. You know? I was like. Here's a bunch of railroad guys. Here you go. You know, um, but anyways, <laughs> I didn't feel like they really needed to get no, 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 the no, TNA no. stuff. They, they talked enough about it. Um, they <laughs> hinted at it because yeah. they showed them with Styles, yeah, Dixie, and they and they had and Dixie, Joe. and they showed Joe. And yeah, Joe talked about it a little bit. He talked but about it. I loved. I, I really the, don't that insight because remember every time he had a match, we're sitting on this show because we knew he had problems. And he's yeah. putting on these incredible things and yeah. always does a moonsault off the top of the cage. <laughs> and we're like, His Kurt, are you're so, so great. Don't die, please. It, it was, Don't die, please. It was interesting him explaining his thought pr- process behind why all his matches were so good yeah too mm-hmm. i thought that was interesting like because he did like he said he he thought that he was treating every match like it was yeah. his last match mm-hmm. so I didn't, I didn't realize he had broken his neck two additional times yeah, i didn't mm-hmm. either like I, I didn't i didn't know about about that no no yeah I, I didn't i don't think i was aware of it like around when he was gm even yeah like i don't think that was terribly out there like i forgot he was gm yeah, I, me I too. Completely forgot about that. Me too. And they and they mentioned it. And I'm just like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That absolutely makes sense. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, uh, so check it out. It's on the network, of course. Uh, so uh, really, really good watch. All those 24s. If you haven't checked out some of the other ones, they they do a lot of great storytelling on there. And it really is that kind of ESPN kind of kind of thing. E60. Mike says now both WrestleMania 20 title matches are kind of tainted. Kind of. The what? Yeah, yeah. I guess. I mean, so. they're still. Awesome. That I still think that's the best WrestleMania of all time, mm-hmm. personally. But even that Brock match. What's that? Even the Brock Les- yeah. uh, Goldberg match. Uh, that's awesome for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true. That is true. All right. Uh, yeah, he was SmackDown GM. That's um. Yeah. He was in a wheelchair for a bit on that too. Like they had a thing where he like broke his leg or something. I thought that's oh, why. That's I thought that right. was legit. Like, that that was that's it? why he was GM. I didn't know it was the neck, mm-hmm. which is brilliant. Well, hey, you draw attention. But well, somebody was asking, you know, with Braun because supposedly he had surgery on the one arm, yeah. but he was attacking the other. Was I talking with you about that, Larry, the other night? And I was like, well, well, don't if you're actually injured on this arm, you in the match, oh, yeah. you do the other one so you, you can actually work it over, right? Right, right. Like I would imagine. I think it depends on the person. Okay, you if know? you're hitting it with an ambulance, I, 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 or yeah. I think <laughs> I understand the reason for doing that, like in reality, like right. keeping him safe. I didn't understand why they weren't going after that arm as like a work, you know? Like, right. Mm-hmm. It just as as part of the storyline. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was the that was the only thing I, I didn't understand. Because like I guess I don't know. I don't know. I right. I just thought they would go after that arm more. Um. Well, we're gonna get to, we're gonna talk a little bit more about Kurt Angle here after break here, but uh, in the meantime, and we're gonna have. We had a great question come up on our group uh, that, that everybody responded to. Uh, so we're going to go through that. And that's actually going to be our big question as we discuss here. And we're going to hear a lot of your answers. I have a pretty big question a little bit. Uh, so in the meantime, please check out uh, our affiliate, IndieWrestling.us, actually um, sponsoring this week's Stomp Out Cancer event, uh, which uh, we're going to be doing the production. And uh, it will be available, over, uh, of course, on IndieWrestling.us. So uh, go buy the T-shirts. Go buy a ticket. Whether you're showing up or not, go buy a ticket. Just, just it's a good cause. And then there's also going to be uh, DVDs and digital downloads for afterwards, so we can continue to help the cause uh, afterwards. So uh, keep an eye out on that. And of course, a lot of other great stuff from uh, our friends RWA, IWC, uh, uh, Premier Championship Wrestling out in Cleveland. Old stuff from Prime Wrestling, the Finding Zach Gallen uh, documentary over at IndieWrestling.us. And also, we sometimes get a write-up from our good friend Tragar. Uh, he previewed, I think this was last weekend's Rise show. Uh, I had an interview with uh, one of the guys involved in that. Uh, so uh, always uh, some great indie content we're trying to share and just kind of share the love of indie wrestling and, of course, the Indie Mayhem show and all that. We'll be right back after this with the big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. We are back. Wrestling Mayhem show. We got our 
Awesome guest from Stomp Out Cancer this weekend. Check it out, Lamont Furris. Uh, StompOutCancerPGH.com, I believe, is the website. Sounds right. Sounds right. I got a flyer right here. Yep, StompOutCancerPGH.com for more information. Sean Phoenix joining us. Lee Moriarty, who's completely going to have a lot to say this segment. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get him going. Uh, maybe on this next one. And, uh, of course, Larry and Chad. I almost yes. said Larry and Chachi. I don't know why that was. That seems to flow better. You're now Chachi. I'm not Chachi. Go. No, no. First two letters are the same. You get to hang out with Chachi on Saturday. Yeah, that's been that's been a while, right? Yeah, it so, has been a while. That's out great. On, out in the wild. Out in the wild. Yeah. On the way to a wrestling show, helping us out with uh, RWA this weekend. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, so you got to meet you got, you got to meet and greet with Chad at our at our DVD table this past weekend. Uh, but anyway, so it's time for the big question. And like I said, we kind of pre asked this one. It, well, we got such a reaction. I think we'll have a lot of fun going over some of the answers because, of course, this thing with Kurt Angle and Corey Graves and the text messages and and everything, I, I guess we kind of thought it was all around the big cast stuff, right? And right. I guess there's more to it. And mm-hmm. at the end, we got a, okay, be here next week. I love you. So the rumors, the the speculations, we had our speculations on the Raw wrap-up, myself and Mad Mike last night. We put... I want to get you guys, before we kind of taint this with what everybody said, because the answers are phenomenal. Um, what is your speculation on who it could be? Um, realistic, not realistic, let's be honest, is pro wrestling, right? You know, they yeah. could go anywhere Anything with this thing. Happen. Anywhere with this, right? Uh, it could just be his wife shows up. Who knows? Um, but uh, let's, let's go to the line. Chad, what do you think? Uh, oh, I get to go first. Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't know. I'm just starting. Uh, oh, boy. Um, I think it's going to be a, out of left field. I don't I don't think it's going to be. I hope it would be left field. I need some people who are thinking it's going to be Stephanie. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't like that. I understand it. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. There's history there. There is. There's like there a kiss is. that was going around it, from it, back in the day. It makes sense. Yeah. They're more than likely, it's, it's probably the odds on favorite right now if you had a that Vegas was doing a uh, you know gambling odds on it, but I, I would want I want some left field completely. Just it's it's Vince McMahon or <laughs> <laughs> that's your guess, Vince, or Vince it's, McMahon. Yeah, <laughs> um, you know you know that guess actually, actually came up a couple of times. So uh, Vince told him he loved him on twenty four. Mm-hmm. So it happened. It's documented. I mean, him saying "I love you" on the phone. And then they showed 24 right after that. Uh, yeah. And... He could be telling Vince he loves him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey. But uh, I, I hope it's... It's, it's uh, 2017. I, I can understand why they would go certain angles, but I'd say why not have some fun with it. Mm-hmm. And Cor- Corey Grace factors into it somehow, too. Yeah. Which kind of makes things a little weird because how does he tie in there? Right, right. Yeah, other than being another Pittsburgh guy. Yeah. You know, like what connection is there otherwise... I'm trying to think. Yeah, like, why would Corey have everything? Why would Corey yeah. be getting text messages directly? And why would what history do they share that mm-hmm. he's connected to all this? Yeah, one wild night it. at Permani Brothers. I'll tell you what, you <laughs> know, know. Our, our, our Pittsburgh they went, guys. They all went down the blush. My God, how many Pittsburgh <laughs> people are on Raw alone now? Three. 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 Holy. Soon to be four with... Uh... <laughs> breaking news <laughs> bombshell that's why he's cut weight with that sweater over there right <laughs> trying to get on 205 live there you go trying uh, to stay a welterweight yeah yeah, yeah maybe yeah. uh doing something in cleveland there Possibly. Yeah. there you go there you go i see why joe's been checking in on you here uh all right all right so your answer is vince mcmahon yeah <laughs> yeah that's it final answer lock it in vince all right man there you go. Larry, what, what, what do you think? Um, Where are we going with this? I hope it's Dixie Carter. I hope. Jokingly, I, I'm i going to say Vicky Guerrero. <laughs> Jokingly. Because you want her back. You yeah. miss her. You <laughs> yeah. miss her. I mean, let's I be honest. I do. Vicky got amazing. <laughs> you know, I mean. No yeah. one else has ever had as much heat by just taking five steps onto the stage than she did. Right. Mm-hmm. As soon as that music hit and she appeared, she, everybody hated that's right. her. Natural talent. Just, <laughs> you can't teach that. can't teach that. No. No, no, no. no. Absolutely not. 
Oh, geez. Uh, uh, Eddie would be proud. <laughs> Every time. No, no, seriously. He, he would. would be. He, he seriously would, yeah. would be. Uh, yeah. He Absolutely. Would. Jeez, he would. Uh, being yeah, uh, definitely. I cheat and so, steal. So, so Vicky Guerrero is your final answer. No. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> she. That was my joke answer. Oh okay. My final answer was Dixie Carter. Dixie Carter, and there, a lot of people said yeah, Dixie Carter. Yeah. yeah, we we've. I don't know if we were doing this at the party or if we did this on on a podcast, but we said, you know, there has to be that uh, Vince comes out and hugs Dixie moment or oh, something. Oh jeez. You know, yeah. like, Boy, like like we had with Eric. You know, I know it's not as big a deal, but still, it's like oh, okay. That's, you know? that's a pretty big deal because that company's still around. And man, I think <laughs> that's a bigger uh, deal ish. Ish. You bought well. You got most of its talent in NXT. That's true. That's true. You could start <laughs> minus some that just left. Also, good to see uh, uh, Kurt yeah. Angle uh, uh, running into Eric Eric Young backstage at WrestleMania or, yeah. or, or whatever. Probably the N- or NXT Takeover. But it's like, oh yeah, they know each other from yeah. yeah by the way, yeah, I know yeah, yeah, all yeah. these young guns down here. Yeah, you have an NXT. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, Lee. What you what do you, what do you think? Who who does Kurt love? Who who? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, I'm not leading you towards an answer here. Uh, I would think it has to be Stephanie or Triple H. It seems like they make the most. You think sense. me Triple H? Yeah, I think he said he loves them to throw people off. Okay, like they okay. do that stuff to swerve people. Okay, because maybe they do. From the segments I've seen, they seemed all concerned and threatened. And mm-hmm. who can make them more concerned and threatened than their bosses? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So I would think it'd be one of those two. I would hope it'd be something like. The horns walk with Vince McMahon thing. Just you would. Be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy's coming back, baby. <laughs> there you go. Team, uh, uh, Mike said it's the Charmel Jason Jordan theory that Jason Jordan's their Ill- illegitimate child. Oh, I didn't hear. I didn't hear that part. Dog doesn't like it. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't hear that part. We we were speculating, and I I'll, I'll jump. Uh, uh, hope I don't take yours. My my guess was was Charmel. Because wow. there was that time when he wanted some, what I don't know what he called her, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> like dark chocolate or something yeah. back in the day, yeah. and he did like this horrible dance, and I'm just like, yeah, That's okay, right. that did what happen. Are, yeah, that I, that did happen. I we we all blocked that. it out because it got weird. But <laughs> I forgot about that, <laughs> Sean. I hope it's someone completely out of left field as well, like Billy Corgan. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, would that be something? That'd be amazing. Because wow. like everyone, like if they're thinking, okay, it's gonna be if it's out of left field, it's gonna be Dixie, right? Yeah. Like, that's the, the go-to. But what if it's, yeah. if it's Billy Corgan? That's like a oh wow, okay, Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, like something Jeff like Jarrett. that. Just, <laughs> boy, yeah. would that be a swerve? WWE, Jeff buy, WWE <laughs> buys Holy Anthem hell. Entertainment yeah, right? <laughs> and gets into the MMA game, amongst other things. I love you know. Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> like <laughs> what the hell? Right? That'd be so amazing. New nobody angle. would see that coming. Boy, yeah, cool. Mike said Dixie should come out and beat the shit out of a set, out of the swagger soaring eagle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got some. Like I said, we had a lot of them. Uh, a lot of people said Dixie Carter. Uh, Danny also said Tyler Breeze. Okay, <laughs> I mean, he's looking what? pretty. I what, uh, what, what <laughs> was what was the Renee Young name he gave himself uh, last uh, week? Uh, I, didn't see it. Tanae Young? Tanae Young? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's that. Like I said, a lot of people said Dixie Carter. People are really kind of into that idea. Uh, yeah. Wow. So people wrote a paragraph on this thing. Uh, you know, saying, hey, is saying, hey, and this was the other thing, too. What, what was, one was brought up last night of fanfic. Um, sorry, that, that just sunk in. What was brought up of, like, maybe it's his doctor and he's clearing him for Ooh. wrestling. Ooh. I think I, like I think that. Mike might have came up with that last night. That that would, uh, if I was angled, that would make me say I love you on the phone. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, You're cleared, buddy. Be here next week. Oh God, I love you. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> See you next week. Yeah, Robert in the in the uh, group yeah. saying, you know, you, can, you know, Stephanie it could lead to Triple H and Angle at SummerSlam, maybe. Um, and uh, the, the Dixie could be. Uh, he's accused of giving info back and forth between the companies. Ooh. Because they Sleeper bought cell. because they bought Anthem and didn't tell anybody. Um, <laughs> Billy Corgan's the real sleeper and all that. Yeah, yeah. Like, Billy he Corgan. works for WWE. He yeah. went in. <laughs> yeah, why do you think that music's so good now? You know, uh, see, <laughs> see, money fo or whatever that is is actually Billy Corgan. 
Um, someone, uh, Matthew in here says that, uh, not Carlin's, but in there from Matthew says, I think it's a swerve and someone like Eva Marie. <laughs> Corey, <laughs> Corey gets to lose his mind. Compromising photos and wellness violations can be hinted at. And the GM sleeping with a superstar can be fire worthy because, uh, we've all forgotten about Edge and Vicky by now. No, 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 no. This guy has that. not forgotten yeah, yeah, about yeah, Edge yeah, and No one has forgotten. Nope. Nope. <laughs> um, but though the seven year rule does apply. That every seven every years seven you get years, to repeat yeah. storylines, uh, yeah. right? Yeah. Think about it. Uh, so that one I was going to go into. Okay, there's some more. But no, actually, that leads to a, a point I wanted to make. Like nobody said any of the girls. No. Like any of the wrestlers. Nope. You know, it's not like Charlotte or because the, no. the, that would kill all the that would kill their credibility. The credibility that they're building we're up keeping, with the women's division. You know, <laughs> actually says the American Milk Association. <laughs> that's a good answer uh, somebody said D- drug dealers Riz took a picture of himself on the other line I did that picture um, Chachi said orange soda yeah, orange soda from Chachi it and then he said, orange and I asked him about that and he sent me like a song about orange soda <laughs> so, it was the Keenan and Kel like, thing yeah okay. the, the, not, my era, not my era not my era what is love baby don't hurt don't hurt me don't hurt me no more uh, so and the Corey Graves is the wild card. Yeah, he that's is. what I can't figure out. Like either they're, they're in. they actually thought it out and are going to include Corey, or they're just going to like just brush him off to the side and just say he was getting stuff. Also, why does he have access to the footage for Big Cast? Like, it seems like they want to do something more with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's coming yeah. back to wrestle. That, <laughs> he got cleared. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I I I still like the manager idea for him. Yeah, I, that it becomes. I think they love him on commentary. Realize they have a talent. Mm-hmm. Like he's a talented yeah. dude, and they're just like, well, maybe we can give you a little more. Mm-hmm. You know, we love what you're doing, but let's have a little fun. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, there's a guy that's freaking worked his ass off. That's for sure. Absolutely. Uh, the last few years. I can't like, he's dropping dialogue like last night. And I'm just like, man, do you think he really knew those words before he got in the commentary? You know, <laughs> like, I mean, I, I mean, he was always a bright dude, but I didn't, you know, then come up in our interviews. That's for right. sure. <laughs> so, <I'm saying. laughs> uh, but, uh, okay. So there were some other things we wanted to touch on from, and I've forgotten all of them that we talked about on the break. <laughs> so, for, so please refresh. Oh, uh, AJ, uh, AJ, um, uh, the AJ thing with Kevin Owens mm-hmm. this past week in MSG. Uh, it was a weird thing. I'm glad to see Kevin Owens is not like hurt and gone or right. anything like that. Like I was just, I, like, I had it on mute cause we were still finished up a show. I'm like, Oh, Kevin Owens is coming out. Good. Okay. I, it's all I really need to know for tonight. Right. Uh, but, uh, he lost the belt to AJ. There's supposed to be the battleground match here in two weeks. And, uh, and, and, uh, then he went black on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Which I don't know if he's come back. I'll check that real he quick. He explained why he went black. Okay. Well, what was the explanation? Uh, the black represents the future of the United States title. <laughs> no, I think it was just the United States. I don't think it was. No, he said title. Oh, did he? Yeah. No. I Some put- people said oh. it's also the United States. I keep but, putting his old Twitter. Um, yeah, he said that it is it is to represent the future of the United States title with that. I forget what he called AJ. In the uh, the actual quote here is my 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 Twitter account is blacked out to represent the future of the U.S. Now that it, the United States title is held by t- a terrible human being. <laughs> yeah. so the United, States, the the, the United States of America deserves... Uh, the, the United States of America deserve a champion they could be proud of. Someone good, someone kind, someone with dignity, someone me. Someone is me. Uh, tonight, I bring my path to claiming my title and promise to everyone, but more importantly, the children, <laughs> that I will get it back. <laughs> He's doing it for the kids. Yeah. Bravo. Bravo. Uh, you know, we were really praising uh, Miz after Raw Talk uh, last, the, the, the two nights ago, but man, that that wins the week right there. Uh, so good on him. I like to see where they're going. I, I'm glad they did not take away the face of America walking around my face for thing that happens with him. Yeah. You know, so it's a nice touch. Yeah. Uh, but you know, and I, I guess you know, I, I we kind of had the weekend to mull over it and worry about it, but uh, it was just I think it was just they they wanted to do something for MSG. They usually yeah. 
Usually they got Brock Lesnar for some reason to right. uh, plowing through Kofi <laughs> Kingston. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, but but you know, I mean, it, it's kind of a, a good for them to do that every once in a while and say, "Hey, stuff happens at house shows. Please come." Yeah, uh, that's that's really what I think it was. Is they hadn't done anything like that for a while, and mm-hmm. something made them pull the trigger. Mm-hmm. Uh, I heard I heard ticket sales were down for Madison Square Garden, and being that that's WWE's. Home turf, they can't and have it that. It was a raw house show, I believe. Was it? Too. Yeah. That's what yes. somebody said. Oh, yes, it was. And they pulled them in. Very yep. interesting. So the only SmackDown match on the card was Owen Styles. It was a full raw hmm. house show. Mm-hmm. Smart, smart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a hey, here's a here's a couple faces. And it's weird that yeah. they didn't do that with the Intercontinental title instead of the U.S. though. Right. Yeah. Well, how excited are we about Ambrose these days? Well, it didn't have to be Ambrose. No, they, yeah, but still, I mean, this is something that was a storyline that that they could kind of you know Styles move forward and with and everything. So, Styles sure. and Owens would sell more tickets than Miz. Yeah. Oh yeah. Styles. Oh yeah. Did they advertise the match though, or is that just like no. a bonus? They might have advertised uh, it locally, right? Mm. Yeah. Mike, did they advertise it local locally? <laughs> No. Like, wait, we'll get the answer. He should know that. We'll get the answer in about a minute. Uh, I said it was a super show. So, oh, yeah. it was a super show. No, oh, Nakamura was there too. It was a super show. Heard they weren't use, They weren't sure if Kale was was injured too. Uh, I think so. Aries has some injuries. He's working on. Oh, that's that too. But um, yeah. So so actually, it was a super show. There was a bit of other stuff. Hmm. I don't know where I heard it was a raw show. Yeah, I had heard it was posted all, online. That it was a raw a show. A lot of the. Matches were, were all raw. Don't they change them I think, sometimes? I think AJ Styles yeah, I think said so. it was a it was a raw show in an interview. Oh, did he? Yeah, like immediately mm-hmm. after. Maybe they only had like a couple SmackDown uh, matches or something. So oh. maybe they had they had more raw, so they consider it a raw. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, maybe. Well, was, was there a SmackDown running somewhere else that just didn't have those two? Yeah, like in a well, small don't town. Don't they usually have like two or three house shows yeah, running they, at the same time? Well, at least or at least two. two? Too, it's and like they'll only, have an NXT. Uh, yeah, NXT somewhere. does their own kind of loops, at least. Like not. Well, I mean, Raw and right. SmackDown NXT have their own like, loops, but there's like two loops for each show, I thought. Isn't there? I think so. I think. Like, there's two SmackDown house shows going the same time as two Raw shows. Because I remember oh. recent, uh, recently, like, whenever Dean Ambrose was a champ, he ended up doing both shows, and it was like a big deal. Wow. Yeah. It was like. He somewhere... did the dark match for one of them, didn't he? I. Uh, I, don't know. I just remember two show. He he did two shows the same day. Oh. Wow, wow. Uh, it could have been like a Sunday morning afternoon show yeah, kind of yeah, situation, something like probably. That. So, and they, I mean, they do. It's amazing when you start looking at those. I mean, we get you know shows here in Pittsburgh, right? Yeah. But they do like the Armory at Johnstown. They do you know smaller arenas like like you know five thousand seat arenas and yeah. things like that. And it's really. Kind of interesting to see that NXT so. <laughs> does like the old territory t- style. Tour. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they like they'll hit those five cities in that swoop, and then they go home. Yep, and they come out and they hit like this five city area, and then they come home. Yep, yep. All of that. I love that. I think that comes from like that old FCW kind of thinking too. Yeah, all the Steve, the Steve Kern days. Yeah, they hit mid. Here's all the mid south cities we're gonna hit. Yeah. Uh, this is. <laughs> And they come up here, and I'll do Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. But then those are like it feels like when they do those, those are the here's a bunch of the main guys. Those ones are the ones where you see a bunch of people that you have not seen on TV. Like they're kind of getting their feet wet, kind of more. Yeah. Because I mean, because a lot of those guys, like you know, don't haven't been on the Indies, right? Right. So they're getting Tina's getting used to it. Raw's Friday, Monday for house shows, and SmackDown is Saturday, Tuesday. That's weird. That's weird. That Why would they weird. have a house show on a live on TV? Um, no, they do. I know yeah. they do do Monday. Maybe house that's shows. just. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, they did. Like SmackDown definitely does Tuesday or Monday night house shows. She said the opposite. Really? She said Maybe Raw she... does Mondays and and SmackDown does Tuesdays. That's weird. Maybe she she isn't calling those house shows, but TV tapings. So the oh, guys maybe. have to go to both of those Friday, mm-hmm. Monday. TV tapings. So that just, would make they sense. They just do one house show a week. <laughs> yeah, here, here's your point. Like this weekend, NXT's in Vancouver, Seattle, uh, and Portland. Yeah, yep. doing that loop. Rip. There you go. Doing uh, the loop, brother. <laughs> Duke's calling out that Lee does not care about WWE. <laughs> I, I care. <laughs> I just don't follow along with the main stuff. I watch NXT and the Takeover events, mm-hmm. and then if someone recommends a match, I'll go back and watch from the pay per views. Like I didn't watch WrestleMania, but I watched AJ Styles and Shane McMahon. Mm-hmm. 
I didn't watch this pay per view yet, but after hearing about it, I watched. We're giving you the primer. I yeah. also we didn't talk about. It. I do recommend the Iron Man tag match at the Hardys. That, that actually was good. I heard it was really good. It. So um, I mean, there's 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 a lot of good stuff. Around. I'm kind of in the same boat as him too. Like mm-hmm. I pick and choose. Like mm-hmm. I have so much wrestling. Oh. <laughs> Tina yeah. Tina yeah. said Friday. Uh, Rod does Friday through Monday. Oh, okay. tours and Smack- smackdown does saturday through t- through tuesday so everybody's doing four day stands every week basically yeah. so makes sense makes sense um and then that usually gets kind of whacked out when they do pay-per-view weekends i think yes I, I remember they maybe didn't do saturdays anyways other than stuff trying to figure out uh the, the lead logistics does, of lee doesn't like tag time tag team matches <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Depends who's in the tag team. This is a fellow stop out <laughs> cancer uh, participant, Duke Davis, that you guys should all check out. Oh, if like you Duke haven't Davis. seen him. You, you don't like Duke Davis. Him like him out. Out. <laughs> no, I hate Duke Davis. He's whack. <laughs> He's whack. <laughs> there you go. We're right here first. Duke Davis is apparently whack. I did not say that. You're a large individual. Uh, you technically said no, it. No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you say it. I just wear Jackson Argus shirt again. I'll be good with him. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, I think, was that everything we wanted to touch on from the weekend? No, we didn't talk Austin about Austin Aries. Thank you very yeah. much. Tragedy. I, that's what happens when my producer can't get on the internet on the West Coast. Uh, but anyways, uh, no, yeah, Austin Aries, what the hell? So apparently he wasn't happy with his direction. People didn't like him backstage. He supposedly asked for his release. Is that the rumor? That's is... I've heard all those things. Because um, somebody was saying he was injured too. And he's I usually, and I don't believe backstage rumors unless it comes from Justin Labar. Because I don't trust anybody else. Uh, so like, figure that's close enough to the source to be kind of yeah. truthful-ish. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. That, which is unfortunate because that, that was some of the best stuff on 205 Live, right? right? Yeah. So. He, yeah. It sucks. <laughs> it was one of your favorite parts. It really sucks. Mm-hmm. I so. mean, it gives some of the other people an opportunity to get pushed, but I doubt they're going to push anybody. Well, we got to Zawa. Yeah, I don't think that's going to no, end well. No, I think I think Cedric's. That's what I think be too. Coming up here pretty yeah. soon. What's he done with him. whatever they did tonight with this? Uh, God. Uh, <laughs> I didn't watch it, but they need to end that feud. Yeah, yeah, bad. they need to end a big. Uh, here, uh, That's been a six at least month at least we don't have like yeah, FaceTime. Fox. Yes. Yeah, Alicia Fox. Yeah, they ended it, and then they did something on Raw when she was on the phone during the entire. Oh my match. god, that should have mm-hmm. been the end of it. So. I had mm-hmm. technical problems with that because <laughs> <laughs> he was he was he had some pretty good momentum after he came back from his injury too. Right. Like mm-hmm. he was he was he was aggressive mm-hmm. and like really fired up, and then. He got stuck with Noam Dar. He was looking a bit a like a like half. old ROH Cedric. I thought a little bit there too, right? Or you know, he looked like he could take Neville. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. And I think they and, need somebody that can do that. I say that's your problem with two of five right now. Who take who beats Neville? Yeah, he's so dominant. Little Lesnar. Hmm? I'm going with Mustafa Ali. That's who Mustafa I thought. Ali. Too. Nice. Oh boy, yeah, they first did their match. I think it was the first time they fought, and like he looked like he was on the same level as like Neville. So yeah. good. And he'd be the guy that upsets him. Mm-hmm. That'd be nice to see. Mm-hmm. He's so yeah. good. He's so nice to anybody. That's the thing. They built Neville up. Yeah, like, they did. Whoever they, does beat him, it's going to be they, a, a nice a nice achievement. It's going to be Enzo watch. They gave him the Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> God, I wish. And you can't teach that. They gave him the Lesnar treatment, though. And yeah. Now they're screwed because they don't have anybody that can. But they've let him. it run for a bit. Right with him, and I think that was really, really good with them. Well, yeah, to a point, and, but then now he's pigeonholed. Yeah, yeah. you know, because now, now it's like, who does he face? It's a good question from Tina. Could this be an opportunity to bring up someone like Organa to face him? Does he fit into the two hundred five category? So. Yeah, so yeah, he's in the class. He's yeah. in the class. Is he? I, yeah. I oh, could see Champa. Right. Yeah. I could see Champa being good. Yeah, yeah, against him. Yes, Champa's injured. I right th- now, think it's still he? way too soon for him because they still need to finish the mm-hmm. the. Chompa but it's not the first time. Yeah. Remember Kevin Owens? That's true. That they've done some kind of, you know. Yeah, yeah you're right. Chompa's injured on. though for like he's, five he's or like, six months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, really? So yeah. I don't think they're doing takeover with him. Yeah, I think that was the bad Unless, part. Is and again, got hurt. And I still have a theory out. that WWE lies about out times. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so they can bring Braun Strowman. Absolutely. Like when they say Braun Strowman was out six for the months, months, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, see you after the next pay per view. It's, it, and look what happened, right? Mike we says uh, all WWE knows how to do is book undefeated champions like Neville, Asuka, Bobby Roode, Authors of Pain, Lesnar. Good. Somebody does. 
Yeah, all good, well, all well, good well, champions. Well, yeah, then then we can't pl- complain about how how everybody trades wins back and forth in WWE. So those are all good champions. <laughs> so what, what, yeah. what, what is it? Yeah, they're all great champions. They're dominant champions. This this harkens back to the day where I felt like. I don't know. Growing up, I felt like just Hulk Hogan was always the champion. I'm sure people thought the same thing with Bruno back in the day, even more so. Uh, so, like, I like this. This, I mean, Ring of Honor does this, right? right. Uh, uh, indie groups will have people wear the belt for, for. I mean, okay, a little bit limited in talent pool, I'm sure, but <laughs> you know, I, I think like you know that adds weight to it, right? Right, yeah. and then and then then what happens when they do drop it? Does it seem like it matters? You know, did it seem like it mattered when? Uh, well, Nakamura had it for a bit, didn't he? Yeah. So, so he dropped it to Root. That was a big deal. And now look at where Root's at. You know, this isn't. These aren't belts that should be hot potato a lot until you get something really, really devastating like Joe and Nakamura. Right. 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 Where you can do something like that. And Joe again, and Lesnar. Joe and Lesnar could be the thing. I, <laughs> I, I you get, like, don't in, mind that. In NXT, if you get people like Root and Nakamura, and you get three others, mm-hmm. then you can right. start. Well passing the title here and there and not keeping it on somebody. Yeah, because that's the problem. Is it, it, in a lot of those spots, you don't have, like, we don't have an Austin, Austin Rock uh, Triple H thing, right? Where everybody's right. like, boom, Eagle, right here. Mick Foley, yeah. Undertaker, Triple right. H. Right. Right. I think they're yeah. at that point right now. With yeah, NXT? Like, oh, no. Were oh, you oh, really excited you about, about Roderick about, Strong and Brood? I thought you were talking about the main roster. Sorry. Main, main roster? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. But then we bring up Jinder Mahal, I you know, which is great, you know. But uh, you have so much like I, you were more excited for whatever AJ Styles, Kevin Owens is doing than you know potentially right. than, yeah. than than that main title. Which is why he wasn't main eventing today, right? So but again, I don't think like it's an interesting gimmicky thing that's happening, but it's not the point of the show. Yeah, you know, yeah. the. Sh- the no matter where they're at, the point of the show is going to be guys like Nakamura, AJ, Kevin Owens, Cena. Yeah, like that's that's the show. You let's, know? I think let's, we're going to get. A, I don't know if, if it will happen, but I'd like to see a fatal four way with Braun, Joe, Lesnar, and um, Roman. That'd be cool. That'd be good. That'd be cool. Like those are four guys I could. As much as I I don't really like Roman, but all four of those guys could go. You could even add Seth and Finn Balor, and it still seems star-studded. Yeah, I mean, they're not big guys, but I mean they're still main event guys. Yeah, so I think those four are hot right now. Yeah, yeah. and Joe even lost, but dude, he's Joe's still on fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think Brock Lesnar really likes, really likes being in an angle with him and the story with him. Right, right. they seem to really play off somebody. each other really yeah. well. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, am I saying that's not good though because they don't know how to build someone to beat them? Nah, I think for every one of those undefeated champions, they got an earmark of the person that brings them down. Yeah, it's Alistair you know, in NXT. It it's Al- like- you think it's Alistair? Really? Yeah, I, I I'd love to see it. I think that'd be great. Um, like you know, I think you know, even if it's not like the one that ends up doing it, it's like could be this guy, but, right? But you know, NXT, yeah. he's not at that point yet. I mean, that's yeah, what they're exactly. doing in NXT, right? Uh, or or Oscar is a tough one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a tough one. Absolutely. Which I think, I think you go the route of you. What I said like a couple weeks ago is she vacates that title and leaves. She's got to because I don't the, like. Mm-hmm. I don't think you haven't have not not throwing any of those female performers in NXT you know down a peg. They're all really great, but it's, you know when I it comes to Oscar. I don't I don't think you can. The only thing I could think of is they like, could do more harm if they brought good. if they brought somebody in, like what is like a a women's equivalent of like a Kevin Owens, Candice LeRae. Is she dominant enough? No, though? but I, I mean, mean like but, she's a star. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. But, but we'll and see. I don't know what the answer is. Right. But, yeah. but you know maybe, what? Maybe I'm, we find one of those in the May Young that's Classic. What I'm thinking, I would have, I would have said Nikki Cross up until that last women's standing match. Hmm. But yeah, after yeah. that, I'm like, that seemed to finalize yeah. it. Yeah. That sh- that should have been the one that she lost. The- she sh- she dropped the title too. Was that all right, she- guys? But- we gotta, we gotta get out of here because we still gotta do interviews. So right. and it's getting late. So I want to know what everybody learned from wrestling this week. <laughs> oh yeah, you're going first. <laughs> yeah, okay, I wrestling. Yeah, that's how we end the show. What'd you learn? What what role? What 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 what? You know what. Moral, what uh, would you learn interesting that happened? Stupid names draw attention. And 
that little eat balls and all they did that on purpose there's no way <laughs> it happened more than once in a major company production company they, right it was on right. purpose to right. get attention so so like they, so they're that was their own subliminal like yeah like all this purpose. like oh that looks kind of like a penis and all, right. all that that happened like that's all like uh of course like big casses yeah when big ass yeah. his big ass when yeah. it had the camera on him yep. they had that low right. camera and he blocked out the seat mm-hmm. so it said big ass little too Clever. perfect and it, it seemed like because i can I, I couldn't believe how many pictures i saw of the eat balls yeah with <laughs> yeah, people eat balls. so yeah <laughs> but yeah you can get away with vehicular manslaughter as long as you are Samoan. <laughs> That's all I learned. The rules don't apply to Samoan. No, no. That goes back to Rikishi. Rikishi <laughs> and him doing it for the rock. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Wow. That's deep. If it was yeah. Triple H, we would have had a problem. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, yeah. M- Mike, wow. said, Mike said he learned that no one in WWE knows special awareness spatial. enough. Oh, spatial <laughs> aware- awareness enough. <laughs> To drive an ambulance forward a little bit to check on <laughs> They can only go one direction at a time, man. If it wrecks, that's it. You're done. Yeah. And all the doors lock, too. It's weird. All of them. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. wonder if Roman took the keys with him. He hit, That'd be it. Beep, beep. I'm out of here. That would have been funny. <laughs> what about you, Chad? Uh, I have learned that um, Kurt Angle still has the best uh, moonsault in the business. His yeah. insults are perfect. You, mm-hmm. you you haven't seen the show on Saturday <laughs> yet, though. So Kurt, are you, you, you heard that? Are you busting out the, the moon salt there? Yeah, yeah, I mean, moon salt off the top of the cage. It. Oh, I'm totally hitting it. <laughs> Double moon salt off, off uh, the cage. We'll say current day. There, there isn't a cage, but we can as maybe to, find as find to this day right now. Okay, fair. So that'll right, give fair. you something to shoot for. Get me hot there. But seeing those seeing those replays of Kurt, he does that. He just hits it, and his arms are just perfect, and he. Always landed flat right mm-hmm. on his stomach. Remember how he many times the, he would miss? Oh, he missed so many He missed times. the one off the cage. Yeah, yeah. He was just, bleh. And then, <laughs> but he looked good doing no, it. Yeah, his rotation, <laughs> his rotation right, right. Yeah. is... It's like Jeff does crazy shit, but he's just <coughs> flailing, flailing doing it. It was know? like a weeble wobble. He always had the... Like, he always just landed. Yeah. Yeah. He was never out of position. He never turned too much. Even if he fell an extra ten feet, it he stayed right, and uh, that ten feet he was just rip straight. It's it's amazing. Never over rotated. Duke Davis yeah. wants to piggyback on that. Why doesn't uh, ambulances have uh, uh, airbags. airbags in them? Not in the back. Not in the back. Prop. I guess. I don't want to spend money on an airbag. It was a prop. To <laughs> he didn't hit you the, your logic. <laughs> he didn't hit the front bumper. That's a, fr- a front okay. collision. All right, all right. A front collision does. They don't care about the people in the back. Yeah, the yeah in the back, it's they're already in trouble. Come on, they've already been in, in one back. accident. They're not surviving the second one. So, I mean, what's the likelihood of an ambulance being in a car accident? They've got sirens and lights. I think pretty good. Have you seen people drive around ambulances in this city? <laughs> I mean, they do not give a crap. I say these. that both my parents are paramedics. <laughs> if uh, yep. if Roman's driving, yeah. <laughs> What's his insurance like? He doesn't have insurance. Come on. <laughs> That's true. Samoan insurance. <laughs> Larry, what'd you learn? Called being Larry, related, you related learn? to What's the rock. That? What'd you learn? Um I learned that um Brock still should not be allowed to talk. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to get that uh, that Iron Sheik. Uh, oh uh, my god! Uh, we we gotta watch him with a live mic. Uh, mode. They caught it though. They, they did catch it. Yeah, yeah, because they're sh- fucking professionals. And there's yeah. a, there's a time delay, and I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if there was a five second time delay when he goes to the ring. Yeah, we're just gonna they caught it. Let that but, um, let's let that uh, KFC commercial run a little bit longer so we can. Uh, and also for that, that um, I think Joe is probably the most over heel in the company right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tina learned that Dixie Carter could do this air as Eric Bischoff. It is the direction they are, are taking. It, 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 I think so. It, it, if this is the direction they're taking on Monday. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Wheels is talking about how the Rev Ron Hunt can cause chaos even when he's not at a show. Uh, <laughs> which... <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, actually, my my what I learned kind of piggybacks off of that a little bit. Chad, you you were in attendance. Yep. I have never witnessed a um, public theater performance in the middle of a wrestling show. Uh, there's a bit of a, a drug and alcohol statement and and uh, 
intervention thing that happened in our promo time at RWA, RWA on, yeah. on Saturday. Uh, so I know that was your first RWA in a while. That was probably a little bit different tone. Uh, you know what surprises me every time? The people of West Newton. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agree to that. <laughs> there are some, some strange cats down in West Newton. It's good some, research so there's some nice though, people. You know? mm-hmm. There's some decent people, and then there are some strange <laughs> cats, to put it nicely. Some real strange cats. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and yeah, we had a lot of fun there. Uh, of course, it was just a very interesting show as it usually we is did. with yeah, our we friends at West Newton Live dot com. If you want to check out what they're doing, uh, Matt Carlin has also learned that Samoa Joe isn't afraid of anyone. <laughs> Seems about right. Uh, so. I think it's in the Samoan genes, to be honest. If he's actually Samoan, I don't know. That's been he's, everybody's calling him a fake Samoan. He is a badass. I think I think Samoa Joe is a real Samoan. Yeah, I think the reason Samoan. why they're calling him fake is because he's not related. To he's all not related. Really, I know. Yeah. Like it's just like how could he possibly yeah. not be related right, to everybody yeah. that's in wrestling? This right. doesn't make sense. How are you? Like you're, you know, somebody out there was like, oh, a Samoa Joe. That's weird. That I I love that he talked to Brock like he was yelling at a child. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and and la- Rock got heated from it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, man. Last one, Brandon learned that Cena could both uh, become the U.S. champion, the IC champion, and stay away from the big titles. He could. He could. Um, <laughs> Duke, 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 Duke points out that Paul Heyman said that he was excommunicated from the tribe. Jeez. He did. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He loves digging into that Samoan heritage a little bit. Uh, so, hey. Stomp out cancer, pgh.com. You can find out information about the show if you're in the greater Pittsburgh or hell, we're even close to West Virginia at that point. So if you're uh, down there, WVU, Morgantown area as well, go. It's, it's for a good cause. See, these guys are there. We separated them with a pillow all night so they didn't come to blows <laughs> for this competitive uh, uh, thing that's happening this weekend. Uh, so uh, what do you what do you guys expect in your first ever one on one confrontation? I'm gonna win. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Right. Your retort, Lee. I'm gonna win because I'm better than him, and I don't do stupid things like breathe fire. Oh, we're gonna we're talk getting, about the breathe fire here. on the man, Andy oh, Mayhem. Wow. That's uh, that's great. So, uh, where can people find you on the internet? Otherwise, uh, you can find me at uh, at x sean x phoenix. It's the same for Instagram, Twitter, your MySpace. AOL Instant Messenger, which legitimately is my screen name. I do sign on every now and then just for the nostalgia. Are there other mm-hmm. people on it? No. Oh. But just <laughs> hop on an ASL. Just, yeah, and pops up, up, puts out a way message. You never yeah. know. You never yeah, yeah. know. Yeah, say, what's, what's happening, guys? <laughs> guys? <laughs> guys? Sometimes I message myself Hello? just to hear the sound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember all those sounds. Uh, Lee, <laughs> where, where can people find you? Uh, Lee Moriarty on Facebook and the Apex of Combat on Instagram and Twitter, although I'm not active on Twitter. I'm just Everybody tweet him so he gets the notifications. No, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> Paul says, a lot of flippy stuff coming this match. Also, the greatest thing right now is Duke Davis yelling pillow fight. Uh, <laughs> so just putting that out there so <laughs> we're gonna keep the pillow installed we're gonna do indie mayhem show you guys check it out on the streams here this thursday or if you're on the live stream you're gonna check it out right now thank you everybody for joining us thank you everybody in the chat room tuesday nights um 10 p.m eastern time next week is the last podcast from mayhem studio Ever. so if you guys join us uh we have no plans make sure to tell them that something interesting will happen you're gonna be you're gonna be doing it from another location i mean this isn't the end of the podcast in two weeks yes, we will the have last chad podcast. the chad reads moby dick <laughs> on tuesday nights at 10 eastern there you go <laughs> there you go uh so so join us for that Holy it's gonna be a lot of fun trail. uh we'll see you guys next time mayhem out This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.